These ambitious theme park projects push the boundaries of what's possible to build. From massive theme park expansions to groundbreaking new attractions, these mega projects are a testament to the grandeur and opulence of the entertainment industry. So put on your seatbelts and join me. We're going to count down the 15 most expensive theme park mega projects in the world. Number 15. Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind Guardians of the Galaxy is easily one of the most successful superhero franchises in the past 10 years, and so it makes sense that it got its very own theme park ride back in 2022. Opened alongside Epcot's 40-year anniversary and Disney World's 50-year anniversary celebrations, it cost an insanely high $500 million to build, although many think that the ride experience justifies that cost. Riders begin by stepping into a four-person compartment that then takes them on what essentially is a super smooth indoor roller coaster ride. Complemented by Guardians of the Galaxy-themed clips and music from the popular soundtrack, the ride feels like a mix between Disney's iconic Space Mountain and rock and roller coaster rides, and gives the riders such a sensory experience that some have even called the ride life-changing. So, even if you haven't watched any of the Guardians movies yet, a ride on this incredible roller coaster is totally worth it. Number 14. Radiator Springs Racers now, Disneyland is the original Disney theme park, and while it has more than its fair share of pricey rides, the most expensive to be built to date is Radiator Spring Racers. Opened in 2012 at a cost of $200 million, the ride is based on the hit movie franchise Cars. In essence, the ride is a race between two six-seater cars, where the two ride around the world of cars at fast speeds before engaging in a race where one of the two is randomly selected as a winner. The whole thing has tons of animations to make it look and feel like you're actually in the movie, and for the most part, it's been able to operate without a hitch. However, things took a turn for the worse on May 24th of 2022, when one of the cars started emitting black smoke just before crossing the finish line of the ride. This led to the entire ride being closed down indefinitely, as Disney ensures that there are no issues with any of the cars or track parts. Number 13. Test Track Chevrolet is easily one of the world's most recognizable car brands, and so it's fitting they have a ride at Disney that's one of the park's most elite experiences. Costing a crazy high $300 million, it was opened all the way back in 1998 and simulates an excursion through the rigorous testing procedures that Chevy uses to evaluate its concept cars before culminating in a high-speed drive around the exterior. Around the ride, there are a bunch of futuristic car concepts, and once inside, you'll be strapped into one of 29 cars. And they're brought on an accelerated hill climb, have the suspension tested on different road surfaces, navigate a cone course without anti-lock brakes, and go through three environmental chambers, a heat chamber, a cold chamber, and a corrosion chamber. The handling is then tested in a series of challenges before a fake barrier test opens up to a track where guests travel at speeds of up to 105 kilometers per hour around a track before being let off the ride. And while this ride truly does have a very long line, it's totally worth the wait for car enthusiasts and shouldn't be missed on your next trip to Disney World. Number 12. Expedition Everest Expedition Everest takes roller coaster building to a whole new level by recreating a mini version of Mount Everest. Located at Disney's Animal Kingdom, the ride cost a staggering $100 million to build, although given what went into it, it's not that all surprising. Coming in at 199.5 feet or 60.8 meters in height, it was built to be exactly this size because if it was built at 200 feet, it would need to have a blinking red light beacon to alert low-flying aircraft, therefore ruining some of the visual appeal of the attraction. In any case, despite this limit, it's the tallest artificial mountain at Disney World. And it's through this mountain that Disney created a roller coaster that has a massive 24-meter drop, spins riders with a 250-degree turn, and goes both forward and backward, making it quite the experience. Expedition Everest also stands apart for having quite a bit of history, as the queue for the ride houses about 8,000 artifacts from the country of Nepal. And unlike most new rides at Disney, it's one of the few in recent memory to not use any pre-existing intellectual property from Disney movies. So whether you're a history buff or an adrenaline seeker, Expedition Everest is the perfect ride for those looking for something on the wild side. Number 11. Steel Dragon 2000 while Disney, Universal Studios, and the Middle East are all featured heavily on this list, one of the few entries to come from outside those super-rich spheres is Steel Dragon 2000. Built in, you guessed it, the year 2000, it's a steel roller coaster from Nagashima Spa Land in Japan. And while it doesn't have any of the bells and whistles of any of the bigger budget parks, this massive coaster still costs an insane $52 million, or $94 million in 2023 dollars. 
At the time, it broke several world records, as it was the longest roller coaster in the world at nearly 2,500 meters in length, as well as the tallest and fastest among complete circuit coasters due to its height of 94 meters and max speed of 153 kilometers an hour. And while only the length record remains to this day, the roller coaster is nevertheless quite impressive. However, it was its geography rather than its stats that factored into the high price. You see, because Japan is a very earthquake-prone country, extra precautions had to be taken to ensure that the roller coaster would stay standing in the face of seismic activity. This included the creation of extra thick and sturdy supports alongside copious amounts of steel to ensure that the roller coaster stands firm. And so far, all of those precautions seem to have worked. Number 10. Remy's Ratatouille Adventure if you grew up in the late 90s, early 2000s, then there's a good chance that you've watched Ratatouille. While not quite as famous as some other Disney characters, the lovable Paris-based mouse was a hit when he came out, and it was perhaps because of the nostalgia and his French roots that a ride dedicated to him was opened in Disneyland Paris in 2014, and at Disney World's French area of the Epcot theme park in Florida in 2021. At a cost of $270 million for the Paris rendition and over $150 million for the Florida rendition, it was quite expensive to turn this character into a functional ride. Why? Well, the whole thing is supposed to be from Ratatouille's point of view, and as a rider, you're supposed to shrink down to his size. The problem? Well, if the humans are mouse size, everything around them has to be huge, therefore adding to the big budget. To make things more expensive, in order for the cars to be able to rotate 360 degrees, they all have to be built on a proprietary trackless system, which in turn also cost a pretty penny. However, the end result is a crazy ride where guests are able to feel like they're running through a kitchen, dining area, and event system, just like a rat would, making it a strange yet exhilarating experience. Number 9. Finding Nemo Submarine Voyage now, generally speaking, most amusement park rides remain firmly above water. However, at Finding Nemo Submarine Voyage in Disneyland, visitors do take quite a plunge. That's because it's one of the only amusement park rides in the world to take guests around in an actual submarine. First opened in 1959 under the name Submarine Voyage, it was meant to loosely simulate the voyage that the USS Nautilus took under the Arctic Ocean's polar ice caps in 1958. And once all was said and done, the eight-boat strong ride was considered to be one of the world's largest peacetime submarine fleets. However, the ride was closed in 1998, and after nine years of work and a reported refurbishment cost of $130 million, it was reopened in 2007 as Finding Nemo Submarine Voyage. The idea behind it is that guests are able to listen in on the Finding Nemo world thanks to new advances in technology that allows riders to hear the fish speak. They then swim through different scenes inspired by the movie, and at the very end enter a whale's mouth and are blown out through its blowhole. As you might expect, effects such as these are a big upgrade from the previous ride, especially since having everything function underwater is a design challenge that's very hard to overcome. So I think it's fair to say that the Finding Nemo submarine voyage is a top-tier ride. Number 8. Six Flags Kadaya Generally speaking, Six Flags is best known for its amusement parks in North America. However, they are taking a massive stab at building something incredible abroad with their new Six Flags Kedaya in Saudi Arabia. Set to open in the capital city of Riyadh, construction began in 2019, with it being built under the auspices of Saudi Vision 2030, which is a plan to diversify the income resources of the country and alleviate its dependence on oil. Set to be a tourism destination, Kadaya will be a complex that goes beyond a simple amusement park, and it's set to essentially be a destination that overwhelms visitors with fun and attractions. However, the Six Flags portion in particular will be home to a top-of-the-line water park, set to cost somewhere in the region of $750 million. It will have 23 rides that are both dry and wet, offer a water sports facility, and have a grand total of at least 17 food, beverage, and retail outlets. It will also have an animal experience with a sort of zoo that includes areas known as the Arabian Peak, Camel Rock, and Herding Grounds, all of which will showcase local wildlife. There are even plans for the world's longest and fastest roller coaster to be located here, with the idea being that this will make it the world's premier amusement park. And while only time will tell whether or not this will all come to fruition or if it will be a commercial success, if it does, Six Flags Kadaya will be absolutely awesome. Number 7. The Rig 
Saudi Arabia is no stranger to spending a ton of money on flashy new projects, and the rig is just one in a long list that are currently on the books. Funded by the Saudi Public Investment Fund, it's to be built on a set of redeveloped Persian Gulf oil rigs at an insanely high cost of $5 billion. Marketed as an extreme park rather than a theme park, it's to be built over 150,000 square meters of space and will be accessed by either ferry or cruise ship. And for those with a lot of cash to splash, docking options for private boats and helicopters, of course, will also be available. Spanning three hotels with up to 800 rooms and 11 restaurants, the luxury crash pad will be a complex that can be traversed by walking across platform bridges. It will be marketed as a place to get real adrenaline rushes, and there will be roller coaster rides, water slides, submarine adventures, and an extreme sports like diving, zip lining, paragliding, and bungee jumping. If you're looking to relax for a moment, cool events such as live shows and underwater dining will constantly be available, making a visit here both exhilarating and relaxing. Weirdly enough, the rig will even include a hands-on experience about how to use the oil drill machinery, with the hope being that this attraction will endear more young people to the idea of the oil industry. And while the feasibility of this entire plan may seem questionable, if all goes to plan, the entire complex should be completed by 2025. Number 6. Ghibli Park Japan is a country known for its anime, and it's because of their popularity that Ghibli Park was opened in 2022. For those of you not in the loop, Studio Ghibli are the animators behind famous anime movies such as Spirited Away and Ponyo, and as a result they've had a massive impact on Japanese culture. In a bid to capitalize this, Aichi Prefecture, which is like the western equivalent of a state or a province, decided to publicly fund the creation of Ghibli Park in order to bring in more tourists. Coming in at $323 million, the park is divided into five sections, three of which are now open. The first is Ghibli's Grand Warehouse, which displays storyboards and props from the productions. The second is Hill of Youth, which represents scenery from the movie Whisper of the Heart. And the third is Dondoko Forest, which features wooden playground from My Neighbor Totoro. The remaining two, which are known as Mononoke Village and Valley of the Witches, will open in fall of 2023 and March of 2024, respectively. What's also interesting about the parks is that unlike most attractions, the park has a maximum limit of 5,000 people a day, helping to create a relaxed atmosphere that isn't overly crowded. This has made it extremely hard to get tickets. After all, they tend to sell out about 30 minutes to an hour after going on sale. However, if you time it right, you can pay the modest sum of about $14 on a weekday or $18 on a weekend, and you'll have an absolutely incredible theme park experience. Number 5. Epic Universe While Universal Studios was built 19 years after the opening of Disney World, it now rivals the brand for market share. After all, Universal Studios, Universal's Island of Adventure, and Universal's Volcano Bay make the entire theme park complex absolutely massive. And this has caused many tourists to choose to visit their properties over Disney's. And in 2025, a new addition, simply known as Epic Universe, is set to open, and there's a good chance that it will give Disney a run for its money. First announced in 2019, it's believed that the park will have five lands, with one being a central hub and the other four including a How to Train Your Dragon land, a Wizarding Paris from the Fantastic Beast franchise land, a Universal Classic Monsters land, and Super Nintendo World. While they're all said to be pretty cool, the Super Nintendo World is perhaps the most highly anticipated one. While similar additions exist in Japan and California, their super popular franchise has never been turned into a large-scale attraction in Florida, and there's hope it will surpass the one built in California. In any case, the mega-project set to be built south of the main park on a 750-acre site should create about 14,000 jobs and have its own set of hotels and amenities completely separate from the rest of the Universal properties. And given the fact that its budget of $315 million makes it Universal's largest investment in a theme park to date, I'd say that a visit here in 2025 is going to be totally worth it. Number 4. Dubai Land For decades, Disney, Six Flags, and Universal have dominated the theme park industry. However, Dubai Land was supposed to unseat them. First announced in 2003, the idea was that it would be twice the size of Disney World in Florida and be divided into an attractions and experience world, a sports and outdoor world, an eco-tourism world, a themed leisure and vacation world, a retail and entertainment world, and a downtown. 
Major companies such as Lego, Six Flags, Universal, and F1 were all set to have a stake in the action, and once all was said and done, the total investment was slated to be a ridiculously high $64 billion. With a total area of 278 square kilometers to work with, which for reference is nearly the entire area of the German city of Munich, builders got to work on a total of 45 so-called mega-projects and 200 sub-projects. However, there were only 22 under construction when, in 2008, everything changed. After the recession hit, there simply wasn't enough money to continue the project, and the whole thing was put on hold. This led to a mass exodus of corporate support, and while a recovery attempt was made in 2013 in a bid to revitalize the project, there's been little news about Dubai land ever since. And while it's still not 100% clear exactly how Dubai land will pan out, it's considered by most to be a fully called-off failure. And while other projects such as Dubai Miracle Garden have been built on the land that was supposed to be set aside for Dubai land, it seems to be that Dubai land is more or less a dead project. Number 3. Doha Quest In the last few years, oil-rich countries in the Middle East have been battling it out to attract foreigners to their countries, and Doha Quest in Qatar is the small nation's latest attempt to bring foreign visitors. While it's not entirely clear how much it's going to cost, the massive indoor theme park undoubtedly came in at somewhere in the hundreds of millions to build. Opened in 2021, it's home to more than 30 rides and attractions, including the Epic Coaster, which is the world's tallest indoor roller coaster, and Magma Blast, which is the world's tallest indoor drop tower ride. It also has many VR rides and uses audio and sensory technology to make them truly immersive. All of these rides are then split into various themed areas to make your experience here that much more interesting. For example, the first zone, known as Oryxville, represents Qatar's ancient past. Filled with stone and sand, it's got rides that are inspired by ancient Arabic myths and themes, with these including the Legend of the Golden Oryx, a 3D motion simulator focusing on the theme of the Oryx, which is an animal native to Qatar. The second section is a city of imagination, which represents the present. This has rides such as the 3D Flying Theater and the so-called Cloud Coaster that simulates the feeling of flying. The third zone, Gravity, focuses on the future. This is where rides that feel ultra-futuristic are housed, with some of the most interesting including Spike's Astro Tower, which is a media-enhanced tilt-drop tower, and the Gravity Swing, which is a futuristic take on the Pendulum Swing. So yeah, Doha Quest is an incredible theme park. Number 2. The Twilight Zone Tower of Terror while The Twilight Zone is a television series that only Disney older visitors are likely to remember, it's nevertheless the framework of one of the company's most popular rides. Built in almost identical renditions at the Walt Disney theme parks in Orlando, Tokyo, and Paris, the ride cost a staggering $140 million to make, but for good reason. You see, it starts out rather normally when guests sit down on a hotel elevator and hear spooky music and a backstory about people who have mysteriously disappeared due to supernatural forces. As they go up in the elevator, it then suddenly drops at speeds of up to 63 kilometers an hour, with scary audio and visual effects being played all the while. It's this elevator drop that's rather expensive. After all, the technology behind creating an elevator designed to drop on cue safely wasn't cheap and had to be rather ingenious. You see, in order to have guests feel weightlessness when they're going down and the feeling of being pulled when moving upwards, the ride uses a counterweight that weighs the same as the elevator, without any guests in it. That way, the motor and the cable needs to simply support the weight of the guests, which is more than strong enough to do. There's also a ton of safety features too, which includes brakes that automatically come on if the ride loses power, emergency friction brakes that automatically activate if the main brake were to somehow fail, a special brake that would come into play if the main cable were to snap, and if all of the parts of the ride were to fail all at once, there are shock absorbers and a cushion of air at the bottom of the shaft that would slow the ride down and keep riders safe. So therefore, while the ride may seem kinda crazy, it's far safer than many of its peers. Number 1. The Wizarding World of Harry Potter While there are plenty of popular theme parks out there, I think it's safe to say that few were as quite as anticipated as Universal Studios' Wizarding World of Harry Potter. At a cost of $265 million, this Florida-based project promised to give visitors an experience that looked like it was straight out of the movies, and by all accounts, that experience was fully delivered. In essence, the entire Harry Potter section of the theme park is a near-spot-on recreation of the magical town of Hogsmeade. 
containing many gift shops and restaurants from the movies and novels, it's a crazy experience to simply walk through the fantasy town, with some of the most fascinating shops including Ollivander's, which sells wands, Zonko's Joke Shop, which has tons of cool magic-themed toys and prank gadgets, and The Hog's Head, which sells the famous drink, Butter Beer. While this part of the experience is absolutely exceptional, the Wizarding World of Harry Potter also has some top-notch rides, too. While roller coasters such as the Dragon Challenge and Hagrid's Magical Creatures Motorbike Adventure all have fun movie-based themes, no rides at the park are quite like Harry Potter and the Forbidden Journey. Accounting for about $130 to $150 million of the park's $265 million budget, the experience on this ride first starts in line, where guests walk through a super-realistic-looking replica of the Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. They get onto a ride that makes them feel as if they're flying around Hogwarts, with the whole thing being a motion-based dark ride that uses tons of animation and sound effects to make it feel like you're actually flying around rather than following a track. In any case, between the crazy rise and a cool town, the wizarding world of Harry Potter was a hit, and thanks to this popularity that the whole thing was more or less replicated in California a few years later. I'll see you next time. Thank you to our channel members.